Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this afternoon we're going to spend our time uh, looking at what is referred to as a lower triangular matrix. Uh, from what we did yesterday, we had a definition, we had come up with a definition of what an upper triangular matrix is. An upper triangular matrix is a, an n by n matrix or a square matrix where the coefficients, uh, where the 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 rows the row numbers for the coefficients wherever the row numbers for the coefficients are greater than the column numbers we set those to be equal to zero now in the case of a lower triangular matrix we do the opposite wherever the row numbers are less than uh the the column numbers we set those to be equal to zero so we do the opposite and when you do that uh you basically end up with something which is like which looks like this so if you've got a system which is set up like this, where you have got the, you, your first equation is 5x1, it only has got one unknown, equals to minus 10. Then the other one, you have uh, x1 plus uh, 3x2 equals to 4. Then you've got uh, uh, 3x1 plus 4x2 plus 2x3 equals to 2. Then minus x1 plus x2 minus 6x3 minus x4 equals to 5. Like this, if you've got a system like this, then this kind of a system is referred to as a lower triangular matrix as we're going to see. For this particular setup, you solve this particular setup using a method which is referred to as forward substitution. So this whole setup is a lower triangular linear system because all the unknowns are only raised up to the power of one. And also uh, the way to solve this particular system, the method you use for doing this is what is referred to as forward substitution. So you start with with the other one, the upper triangular matrix uh, linear system, we started with the last equation. In this particular case, you start with the first equation, which is the 5x1 five, uh, five, is equal to minus 10. So if you start with 5x1 equals to minus 10, then you end up with x1 is equal to minus 10 divided by 5, and you're going to have x1 equals to minus 2. Here, x1 equals to minus 2. That's what you're going to end up with. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then once you have found your x1 from the first equation, you're going to use your x1 in the second equation so that you can find uh, x2. So when you use your x1, which you have found in the second equation, you're going to end up with uh, something which looks like 3, x2 equals to 4 minus x1. Then you divide both sides by 3, so you're going to end up with x2 equals to 4 minus x1 divided by 3. And when you do that, you end up with something like this uh x2 equals to 4 minus 1 then x1 divided by 3 so you're going to end up with x2 being equals to 2. now that you've got your value of x1 equals to 2 and x2 equals to uh x1 equals to minus 2 x2 equals to 2 you can use this x1 equals to minus 2 and x2 equals to 2 you can use them in the third equation so that you can find your x3 so this one you know what x1 is now you know what x2 is so you can use these values you found to find your x3 so you transfer these guys here to the other side so you're going to have a uh, 2 x3 equals to 2 minus 3 x1 minus 4 x2 the whole thing divided by you're going to divide by 2 so you're going to end up having x3 equals to 2 minus 3 x1 minus 4 x2 divided by 2 and when you do that you're going to end up with this bit here you're going to end up with x3 equals to 2 minus 3 then inside you put your, your x1 value which is minus 2 minus 4 then you put your x2 value which is 2 then divide by 2 you're going to end up with x3 equals to 0 then next uh, you use your values of x1 x2 and x3 to find x4 using the last equation so when you do this uh so you have your x1 is now known your x2 is known your x3 is known so use what you have here to find the last equation here so basically what you do in this particular case you just get this part x4 to the other side then this bit to this side so you're going to end up with uh a minus five minus five minus x1 plus x2 minus uh six x3 equals to x4 so when you do that uh, you will end up with the following. <clears throat> so 
So you end up with uh, uh, x4 equals to 5 plus minus 2, uh, min minus 3, 2 plus 6. Then you put a 0 there, divided by 1, then you're going to end up with this. You're going to end up with x4 equals to 3. So basically, that's this way you work through a lower triangular system. So with an upper triangular system, you use back substitution. With a lower triangular system, you use forward substitution. So uh, if we do the same thing which you did with the upper triangular system for the lower ones, if you have got a system, if you've got a equations with six unknowns, like this one which you have here, where we've got six unknowns, you need six linear equations to for you to be able to find a unique solution. And if those equations are arranged in this manner, where you've got a11, x1 equals to b1, uh, a21, x2 plus a22, x, uh, sorry, a21, x1 plus a22, x2 equals to b3, uh, b2, then a31, x1 plus a32, x2 plus a33, x3 equals to b3, then a41, x1 plus a42, x2 plus a43, x3 plus a44, x4 equals to b4, then a51, x1 plus a52, x2 plus a53, x3 plus a54, x4 plus a55, x5 equals to uh, b5, then a61, x1 plus a62, x2 plus a63, x3 plus a64, x4 plus a65, x5 plus a66, x6 equals to b6. When you have a system like this, this is basically uh, what we are just from calling a lower triangular system. The reason why you have this a11 with two numbers is because these numbers are representing the row number and the column number. The whole point of doing this is that at the end of the day, we want to transform this linear system into a matrix product of the coefficients. This a11, a22, uh, a21, to, uh, a22. This coefficients, a, a, a product of the coefficients and the unknowns, which are x1, x2, x3, x4, up to x5, being equals to this column matrix of this constants b1, b2, b3, b4, b5. So in this particular case, uh, you of course start with this bit here. You start with the first equation, which is your a11 x1 equals to b1. When you do that, you work out for x1. So when you work out for x1, you're going to have uh, x1 is equals to b1 divided by a11. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you're going to have b1 uh, b1 uh, x1 is equals to b1 divided by a11. So you're starting from the first. You're starting from the first. You're starting from this one. This one here, which you have here, this is the first row. So you're starting from the first row. So here, you're starting with the first row. x1, that's the first for the first row. Uh, b1, then a11. First row, first column. That's what you start with. Then, once you've found your x1, then you move on to this one here. You move on to the second row. The second equation. A21 x1. So we already have our x1 equal plus A22 x2 equals to uh, B2. So when you do that, so what you're going to do is you're going to get this bit here. You're going to get this bit here. You're going to take it this side. So you're going to end up with B2 minus A21 x1. Then you're going to divide by both sides by A22. So when you do that, you're going to end up with the following. You're going to end up with uh, x2, then you have a b. The b has the same 2 as the x. Then at the bottom, you're dividing by your the coefficient of the x2, which is a to 2. Okay? Then the other thing you notice is that this row, the row number, which is the 2, is the same as the row number which this coefficient has here. So you've got a2 for row number 2. But then, since you're substituting the first thing which you found, you start with you start you start off with one, then x one. So here, you this bit here, the two is reduced. You you subtract one from the two. For the first time, for the first time, the first time which comes after the b, for the first time which comes after the b, here you subtract one from this one so you end up with you subtract one from the two you end up with one here you end up with one here so in the other step what we're doing is we were adding 
1 to the 2, 1 to the k, so that you end up with k plus 1 like that. What you're going to be doing here will be subtracting 1 from the k. Are we clear? Is it? Yes. Yeah. For example, when we work out the next term, uh, x3. So for x3, for x3, we're going to have b3, then a33. Then the other terms which come after the minus sign, you're going to have a minus, then you're going to have an a. Then the row is going to be 3. Okay, the row is going to be 3. Then you subtract 1 from the 3. You're going to end up with uh, a3, 2, x2, then minus a3. You're going to subtract another one. So you're going to subtract, if you subtract 1, then you subtract 2. You're going to end up with uh, minus a3, uh, a3, uh, 1, x1. So when you do that, if you look at what you end up having for x3, so you end up having this. You end up with having x3 equals to b3 uh, divided by a33. Then you have minus. So for the 3 bit here, the first, the, uh, the first term, when you, we remove 1, so you have your a having 3s, which is for the row. But then these other terms, the other terms which follow, the column terms, uh, the, the column numbers. So from this 3, the first time you subtract 1. So you're going to end up with 2. Then x2. The other term you're going to subtract 1, you're going to end up with the 1 and x1. So these bits are accounted for. So we are moving the opposite way like that. Or you could just come here and just say uh, we are working out for this bit here. So we're going to get this one a31 x1 a32 x2. We'll take it to the other side. So you're going to end up with b3 minus a31 x1 minus a32 x3 divided by a33. So you're going to end up with x3 being equal to a31 uh, minus a3 uh, going to have b3 minus a31 x1 minus a32 x2 divided by a33. Is it clear? The reason why I'm insisting that you see a pattern in how the numbers are is because we eventually have to come up with computer programs which will use this. Is it clear? You need to be able yes, to sir. see, you need to be able to see a relationship in these terms. You need to be able to see a relationship in these terms and how they are arranging each other, how they are, they are arranging together. Okay. Then once you find your your x3 so you're going to use your x2 x1 x2 and x3 in the fourth equation here so you have your x1 here x2 x3 here so that you can find your x4 so all these terms your all these terms here you transfer them to this side so you end, you end up with uh b4 minus a41 x1 minus a42 x2 minus a43 x3 divided by a44 now when you do that Again, I want to emphasize that there is a pattern to these things. Here. So, you're working out the fourth term, your x4. This 4 is the row. So, for this 4 being the row, your b term, your b term is going to have a 4. Then, divide by your, 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 your a. Your a is going to have 4 all over the place. So, it's going to be a for 4. Then, for this b, this b is the, the four is for the row. So your your, your terms, your a terms, or the or the a terms, or the coefficients are going to have the same the same row, which is four, here, which is four, there, which is four. Is that clear? Yes. However, when it comes to the columns, for the columns you start with the four. You subtract 1 from the 4, you're going to remain with a 3. That's 3 there. Then your, 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 your x term is going to be x3. Then you, sub, you increase how much you're subtracting. First, you start with subtracting 1, then you subtract 2. When you subtract 2 from 4, when you subtract 2 from 4, you're going to remain with a 2, which is this 2 you have here. Then the x term is also going to have a 2. Then later on, you move on to subtracting 3 from the 4. You subtract 3 from 4, you're going to remain with 1. 
and your x time is going to 1. So all the times and the coefficients are accounted for. We are moving in reverse, like that. Is that clear? Yes. For the other term here, the x5 term, of course, if you move to here, what you have here for the x5 term, so you get all these terms, you move them to the other side, then you divide by a55, so you're going to have b5 minus a51 x1 minus a52 x2 minus a53 x3 minus a54 x4 divided by a55. We are doing a subtraction from b4, b5. It's basically what, what, you, are what you are doing in all these. It's like we are assuming that this b, we are taking at what we are doing is when you, you are trying to work out x1, how much is x1? We are starting with a guess value. Say, oh, x1 is b. But it's not just b. Our guess value is x1 is b. But for us to find x1, we divide the b by a11. That's why we end up with this. Is that clear? Our initial value for x1 is b. Our initial value for whatever x2 is here, our x2 value is b2. But what we are doing is we are going to subtract something, a, a bit of something from the b2, which is what we're doing here. Instead of just having it as b2, we are going to subtract a bit of something. Here, we just left it for, for the first term, it's b1 over a11. For the second term, x2, it's b2. It, 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 it could be b2 over a22, but that's not what it is. It's B2 over A22, but from the B2, we need to subtract a bit of something. We need to subtract this much. So we keep on subtracting something from these B values, this B3, this B4, this B5, this B6. Depending on what it is, you can find out how much you need to subtract. So for this one, for B5, for B5, we know we we'll have to divide by a55 but just doing b5 divided by a55 that's not it there's something which we need to subtract from here since the other terms this the, the raw term is a five then the coefficients are going to fives so we're going to start with subtracting one from five so we're going to end up with four so we're going to have uh, b5 minus a five four x four minus a five uh, uh, x uh, a five three x three minus a five two x two minus a five one x one, which is what we have here. A five one x one, a five two x two, a five three x three, a five four x four. So basically what you're doing here is we are trying to modify these terms. We're trying to do a modification of these terms, these B terms. We start out, we're basically starting out with a B as the answer, as our guess value to what is supposed to be the thing. Then we modify it. Then eventually after we do a modification of B, then we divide it by the coefficient of this unknown. And if you do that, you find out that's what, that's what you've done here for B5. That's what you have. Yeah. How you do the subtraction, whether you subtract this one first or this one first, like I've done, because I'm trying to find a system, a relationship in all these things. I started out subtracting this thing, then I subtract this thing, then I subtract this thing, then I subtract this thing. It doesn't matter. It's subtraction. Whichever way you do subtraction, whichever thing you subtract first, it doesn't really matter. Are we clear? For, for the last part, we are working out x6. For x6, we have to modify b6. So basically, your rough answer would be uh, x6 is equal to b6 divided by a66. Like the way we work at the first time. But in this particular case, we need to modify the b6 before we can divide by a66. A66. So here, the row number is 6, 
That's what you have here. So basically, you, all your coefficients are going to be 6. The A coefficients, they're going to be 6. This one has got a 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 6. Like that. Then you start with, you remove 1 from 6. So you end up with this 5. Then you end up with x5. You remove 1 from, uh, after you remove 1, next you remove 2 from 6. You end up with a 4, which is what you have here. 4. Then you remove 3 from the 6, you end up with a 3, which is what you have here. Then you remove uh, 4 from the 6, you end up with 2, which is what you have here. Then you remove 5 from the 6, you end up with a 1 here, which is what you have here. Is that clear? Yes. There is a pattern to how these coefficients are showing up like that. Okay, so... Okay, are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay, next. Uh, so, if we have uh, this kind of a system, which is a lower triangular system, A11, X1, uh, A21, X1, plus A22, X... Uh, so, sorry, A11, X1 equals to B1, uh, A21, X1, plus A22, X2 equals to B2, A31, X1, plus A32, X2, plus A33, X3 equals to B3, then A41, X1, plus A42, X2, plus A43, X3, plus A44, X3, X3, uh, X4. This is supposed to be X4 here. X4 equals to B4, then A51, X1, A52, X2, plus A53, X3, A54, X4, A55, X5 equals to B5, uh, A61, X1, plus A62, X2, plus A63, X3, A64, X4, plus A65, X5, A66, X6 equals to 0. The reason why the other terms here are not showing, if even if we know that these, the, we have got six unknowns for each of these coefficients, for each of these uh, uh, equations. The reason why the other terms are not showing up, it's because those particular coefficients are equal to zero. We saw that with the other thing yesterday. Is it clear? So we can write our equations like this. We can fill up with the, uh, we can uh, explicitly write our equations with all the zero coefficients and all the unknowns like this. So we end up with a11 x1 plus 0x1 plus 0x3 plus 0x4 plus 0x5 plus 0x6 equals to b1. Then a21 x1 plus a22 x2 equals to 0x3 plus 0x4 plus 0x5 plus 0x6 equals to b2. a31 uh, x1 plus a32 x2 plus a33 x4 plus 0x4 plus 0x5 plus 0x6 equals b3. Um, a41 x1 plus a42 x2 plus a43 x3 plus a44 x4 plus 0x5 plus 0x6 equals to uh, B4. Then A51 X1 plus A52 X2 plus A53 X3 plus A54 X4 plus A55 X5 plus 0X6 equals to uh, B6. Then A61 X1 plus A62 X2 plus A63 X3 plus A64 X4 plus A65 X5 plus A66 X6 equals to B6. We can write our thing like this. When you have your equations written like that it also simply means that you can express your equations as because what we have what you have are six unknowns we have what we already have are six equations with six unknowns so you can express your your equation which you have written in this form in the form of a a, a, a coefficient matrix a which is a six by six matrix in this particular case, then uh, a column matrix of unknowns X equals to a column matrix of the constants B. Like this. So when you do that, so you end up with the following. So you end up with the coefficients, uh, A11, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then A21, A22, 0, 0, 0, 0, then A31, A32, A33, 0, 0, 0, then A41, a42, A43, A44, 0, 0, then A51, A52, A53, A54, A55, 0, then A61, A62, A63, A64, A65, A66, then this is going to be your matrix A, then this bit here, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, it's going to be your X, your X matrix, a color matrix, then B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, this is going to be your color matrix, of, of, of constants B. 
So in this particular case, if you want to show that these are equivalent, you multiply this row times this column, you multiply the second row times the column, you multiply the third row times the column, you multiply the fourth row, you multiply the fourth row times the column, you multiply the fifth row times the column, you multiply the sixth row times the column like that. And that's how you do your matrix multiplication. So where you have your A being equals to this coefficient matrix, then your X being equals to this column uh, matrix of unknowns X1, X up to X6, then your B being equals to this column matrix of B1 or the way up to B6. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, once you try to do this, this assume you can do it. Fine. Once you try to do this, then you've got a setup which is like this. The other thing, once you have a triangular system, whether it's an upper triangular system or it's a lower triangular system, you, by definition, in our case, you will notice that for what we have, What do we have? You notice that all these terms here you have uh, uh, the row number one. This is A1, uh, A12, where the two is the column, the row is the, the one. Everywhere where the row number is less than the column number, we have set such a coefficient to be equal to zero. That's basically the definition of what an upper triangular system is, where you have set everywhere where the row, which is your i here, where the row, your i, is less than the j, when the, your i is less than j, for such coefficients, you have set everything to zero. When you have such a thing, then what you have is what is referred to as a lower triangular system, and when you do this, you will do a multiplication. You basically multiply your matrix A and matrix uh, X. You basically end up with what you have here. So in general, for an N by N, if you would, you think N by N, uh, um, if you would N unknowns, if you would N unknowns and you would N equations, then you can write the whole system like this, like that. Then you can start doing whatever it is uh, the substitution which you're supposed to be doing now for that for this to happen the first thing of course as you are aware is how we have worked out all these things you have to make sure that your the, the coefficients in front of the unknowns if you're looking for x1 the coefficient in front of x1 which is a11 that coefficient must not be equal to zero if you're looking for x2 the coefficient in front of x2 which is your a22 should not be equal to zero the coefficient in front of x3, which is a33, should not be equal to 0. Only then do these things work. So you can work out your x1, as we have shown, b1 over a11, your x2, b2 over a21, x1 over a22, b3 is b3, uh, then you've got this whole thing which you have here over by that, and stuff like that. So you can do this, like that. And eventually, what you have here. Now, you have to make sure, if you are going to do back substitution, you first need to work out the determinant of your matrix A. If the determinant of your matrix A, once you have your what you your, your matrix A, which is your matrix of coefficients, you need to work out the determinant of that matrix. In the determinant of that matrix, you simply work out by multiplying the diagonal elements. You multiply these guys. You multiply these guys. This. A11 times A22 times A33 times A44 times A55 times A C6. When you multiply these guys, then that's how you get your determinant of a triangular uh, square matrix. If the determinant is not equal to zero, then that shows you that there is a unique solution for all these unknowns. However, if it turns out that the determinant is equal to zero, then you cannot work out any solution. If the determinant is equal to zero, then the first thing you're going to work out, you're going to work out this one. You're going to work out x1 
is equals to b1 over a11. After you work out x1 equals to b1 over a11, the next terms are going to work out will be given as follows. You're going to have xk is equals to bk. Now remember what you're doing here. As you're working out your xks, which are not equals to a1, which is not equals to one, because now you're starting for the number of rows. You're starting with two, three, four. You keep on going until you reach n. So what you're doing here is bk divided by akk. You're trying to modify your b. Okay, you are trying to modify your b. As you be trying to modify your b, what you'll be doing is you'll be subtracting. You'll be doing repeated subtractions from your b. So whatever your b is, then you'll be subtracting a product of the coefficient times the unknown. So basically, in this particular case, your coefficient a, uh, which is this a, is going to have the same row number as your k as your x. So your coefficient a, this one, is going to have the same row number as your k. But then there's a column number j. The column number j will start from k, but k is going to be reduced by 1. You reduce your k by 1. The first time you do it, you reduce your k by 1, then you end up with, uh, what is a? k, j. So k has been reduced by 1. Then you're going to multiply with whatever corresponding term it is you're going to be doing. What you're doing here with this thing, is this should not confuse anyone. What you're doing here with this thing is basically, you're doing the same thing I've been doing here, but you are starting from this, you're, you're starting from this side. You've got your B3. Your three is the, the, the row number, and that's what you have here. You've got A33, like this. But when you start subtracting, you don't start with this one, the first one, like the way we have written it, like this. No, you start subtracting this thing. You start, so you reduce your three by one. Your k, your three is a k. This three which you have here, that is your k. So you've got three is equals to k. Uh, three is equals to k here, k k here. So you start with uh, the 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 row here, it's a k there, three. But you're going to reduce it by 1. You're going to reduce by 1 the first time. So when you reduce your 3 by 1, that's why you, you end up with what, what you have here. What you're writing here. K minus 1. J is equal to K minus 1. Is that clear? Are we clear? You reduce your 3 by 1, so you end up with A32X2. Then after you reduce your 3 by 1, then you increase from 1, now you reduce it by 2. So when you reduce it by 2, you're going to end up with A31X1. So basically, the way your computer program is going to work, when you create a computer program, it will not start with subtracting this term. It will not start with this term. It will start with this term. It will remove this from B. Whatever you're going to be left with, then it will remove this from B. When it comes to B4, it will start by removing this term first, then it will remove this from B, then it will remove this from B. Then you're going to be, whatever you're going to be left with, that's what's going to be divided by A44. Are we clear? Yes. On how this thing is going to work. Okay, so that's the thing about uh, forward substitution. Any questions? We have come to the end. So when we meet next week, we're going to see how do you come up with an upper triangular system so that you can do back substitution. That's what we're going to focus on. How do you come up with an upper triangular system so that eventually we are able to do back substitution? Are we clear? Any questions? Yes, sir. No questions for me. Okay. The other people? No, no questions for me. All right. If people don't have questions, that's good. So when we meet on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, when we meet on Tuesday, we are going to look at how do we, how do we move from, uh, from, from, from this? How do we move from this? The problem we will need to solve 
is how do you move from something like uh, uh, where is that? Where, 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 where? How do you make the change from? Um, that's a minute. Yeah. How do you move from having something like this to having a triangular system, an upper triangular system in this particular case, which is what we're interested in? How do you move from having this to having an upper triangular system? Are we clear? That's a problem we need to solve. Once we can do this, then we can solve any system of linear equations. Once we can move from having this to an upper triangular system, then any system of linear equations can be worked out. Are we clear? Yes. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do next week. Unless there are any questions, we have come to the end for today. No questions, thank you. All right. So see you next week. Have a good weekend. Thank you.